Apparently, I'm not sharing my screen. Okay, so <clears throat> so let me show you what I did so far. I, I don't know, as I said, I don't know why I'm not sharing my screen. So let me show you what I did so far. Uh, so if I go to uh, just the live project that I just created, uh, and if I go to Apicos, uh, this is actually uh, the Apico that I just created. And this is the variable, it's uh, text var uh, is the name of the, uh, the variable, and then it's a string, and there's this default variable. And this is the query parameter, which is also a text. And then uh, you, this value is coming from variable and the variable name, it's text variable. And this is uh, now done like this. You can see the information is written over here, how you can take a variable and put it actually in your uh, string because you need this in order to send a request um, how you're supposed to send it. And then when, you, when I go to the widget tree, this is the uh, request that I, uh, if you go to some random widget where you want to get your request, send your request, sorry, not get, but send your request to get the Apico and then the, uh, the api request which is qr code generator and then you actually have the text var and this is uh coming from a specific value in my case so this is what i did and as i said because this uh probably you need the uh, identification in order to do it and i don't want to get into it right now because i don't have so much time left like i have like 10 minutes or something like that. So how you can actually fix this? So you get actually the easiest fix, as I said, is to get with the documentation and see how you can uh, identificate yourself. Uh, the easiest way is to just add a header and then see, as I said, see the, see the documentation and just see what you, what you request. But for example, bear, it's one, one of uh, the types that you actually, it's one of the types uh, that you actually can write and identificate yourself. Uh, it's the token. Uh, and then, uh, and then you just write the token. Uh, but as I said, you have to read and uh, to know what exactly do you want. And then if I go, if I just write uh, like that and just uh, get the API call for QR uh, server and then uh, create a QR code, the size of the QR code and the data. And this is actually, for example, in this uh, like the demo text. And then uh, here you can actually, this uh, can be, taken from the variable or from the query parameter. Let me just see if I'm still sharing my screen. Um, I am, I hope. And then if you actually test this, so test this. So let me just write test, test, and then write test, okay. Test, and then send Apico. You should able to see the QR code right here. As I said, the problem here is that you're actually getting uh, a QR code and not a JSON file. Uh, Flutterflow is expecting you to get a JSON file and that's why you're getting a status 200 success and then no. Uh, in order to generate the QR file, you, there should be a way to actually generate the QR file and then save it as an image or something like that. So uh, because you're getting, I think this is the raw data uh, and the raw data is um, something like this. Just copy and uh, shut. Something like this, which is, of course, this is nothing. I mean, uh, it's uh, just the bytes that it's actually converted into a, uh, an image, in this case, it's a QR image. Uh, so because I'm using PHP, uh, you can actually turn this, when I write P PHP, uh, I'm not sure, maybe raw 
data to image. I'm not sure if this uh, will work. Uh, but yeah, for, uh, essentially you have something like this image create from string. And this is the string that I just sent. For example, this is an image. And when you use, for example, PHP, but you can use any other language, uh, probably you can use uh, Dart as well, I'm assuming. So if you just write Dart and then write image provider, and this should actually give me uh, an image from a raw data. So supports images, uh, which is to load raw RGB pixel data. And then in theory with these widgets, uh, with this uh, package, you can actually display what is, uh, what is, what you're getting from the, uh, from your request. Uh, the other thing that probably it's uh, more related in this special case, because in this special case, you're not getting a JSON uh, data, but you're getting some other data. So in theory, when you're getting some other data than JSON, you actually, uh, because Flutterflow is not supporting this, you actually have to convert it. So there are two ways of doing that. Uh, doing that. So one of the way is to just, just uh, use a row So just uh, use a row and then convert whatever you're, whatever you're getting with a cloud function and with the uh, one that we are actually uh, having. Uh, like, uh, I can open it. So let me just write. Uh, yeah, Josh will be super happy with me. We're not able to open that. Uh, so it's that. Yeah. Okay. But of course, you can get the link from uh, the our community. Um, but the link is should be over here. Right now it's hidden because I'm live for some reason. Okay, uh, but yeah, what I, what I wanted to say is that uh, you can use Sorowi uh, to actually convert this data that you're getting and then convert it to an image. And the other thing, for example, you can use make. So if you can use make.com and then get the data and then uh, using make so if i write make json to image or something like that i'm not sure uh if uh, i get if there is a documentation regarding especially that uh, but uh, you can also use that uh, so http and image and json integration and there are some uh, useful uh, converter format and you get a file and so on and so forth. So as I said, with the, with the, with the types that are not uh, JSON types, so if, you, if the API code you're trying to uh, use in Flutterflow, it's not returning a JSON type, uh, you have problems, you have to uh, rely on some other things than uh, the standard Flutterflow sent to API, <clears throat> but as but, uh, but uh, as I said, you can use make and you can use make.com or you can use uh, Rory in order to send a request or maybe make.com in this uh, case will be uh, better. And you can send a request and you can uh, the data that you that it, that you came uh, the image for example you can actually save it. I think you can say I'm not sure. Uh, George is the more expert in the flow of flow, but I think you can save it, uh, the raw data into uh, into Firebase. Um, but yeah, talking about APIs, there are a lot of things that uh, I can cover. Um, and as I said, uh, best thing and ideally uh, it's to just uh, record a short uh, loop loop video or just a video uh, explaining what is your problem and then I can use this video actually and then I can play it 
uh, in the live sessions and then answer your questions. Uh, but uh, I have like one to one minute left and then I can just uh, show you uh, how you can actually use uh, API calls real quickly again, real quickly again uh, in Fluidflow. So this is the name of the API call. It's relevantly uh, irrelevant, so you don't, you have you can use uh, you can write whatever you want. And here's the API calls method. So we have uh, get, post, delete, put, and patch. Uh, get is used to uh, with get you're actually sending the data only to the URL. Uh, so you cannot send data. Uh, anyone else. So that's why if I change to post, you can see that you have, right now I have a body and this body I can send some data, but in get, I don't have any data except the query parameters, which are query parameters, as I said, inside the URL. So why, uh, uh, what is the difference between the, mo the most difference between the get and the post? Usually the guest, the, the post is uh, used uh, to change something or actually to uh or actually to uh to create something uh, because when you're creating for example uh you're when you're creating uh i don't know like a cart in an order you need a lot of stuff right you need uh, uh the user id you need uh, you need to write uh, the order ID and so on and so forth. So because you need a lot of things and you and it's not practical to put all this information inside the URL, of course you can do it, uh, but it's not practical to do it. So that's why most of the people are using POST for this to send a lot of data, a lot of parameters here. And then you have the delete. Of course, delete is used uh, to delete things uh, and it's only now QR parameter because here you can you can have a normal uh, API call and then here you can say for example delete order ID and this one will be the ID of the order and this ID of the order will come from here for example so this one will for example will delete the order ID of course delete is used for deletion put is actually used uh, I think put is used for updating things normally. Uh, and uh, patch, I think, I'm not sure, but I think put and patch, I don't know what is the difference. I think both of them uh, have to be used for updating things, to be honest. Uh, and that's why you're getting uh, get, uh, create, delete, and update. <clears throat> but to be honest, most of the people, most of the used one, are get and post. So if you master those two, you don't need anything else because in theory, you can just have a get request and then here you can just say delete equals to true. And then if you have delete equals to true, then we actually, you can have your API call to delete things and you don't need a delete method. So both, both will work. Uh, it depends on the it depends on the API code that you are using, and then you have headers. Headers is the information that you are sending with the request in the headers, which means that the, the most uh, the most common one is the content type, which is the action uh, JSON, and that means that you are actually sending a JSON. Uh, for example, in the post one, you're saying to the request, "Okay, I'm sending a JSON," and here in the body, you can actually have you have uh, different kind, different types of the body. So you can have non-body, which will not, I'm not sending anything. I'm sending a JSON. So this is the JSON. You can drag and drop uh, things over here and then uh, put a uh, same, put a, put a colon, comma, sorry. And then here, actually this one should be the same as this one. So if you just write it like that, it will just give you the same uh, variable as the one above. You don't need to interior, you don't need to uh, drag and drop it. Uh, the the most important here thing is that if you click format, it will actually, uh, it will actually uh, tell you if you have an error. So uh, in this case over here, I need to put a comma and then if I click format again, it will just format it. And if you format it, if you click 
formatted, you don't get any errors, then everything is fine. If I uh, if I place a com over here, because sometimes I'm not sure if I should I do, I should I not do this, I'm joking, of course I know. And then if I click format, um, I'm getting an error and I have to delete this comma and then format it again. And then I see that uh, the error is gone. Normally the error should tell you which line it is, but right now it says on line four, but actually it's on line three and the charter is the one charter that it is. So it's basically, Zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is the charts with it says one chart. So I don't know what is the logic here, to be honest. I'm not sure. So if I have uh, uh, one error over here, uh, it's supposed to say line three and charter three, which in this case should be correct one. Because if I count a zero, no, if I can't one, sorry, one, two, three, and this is the third charter. So this is working. But if I have an error over here, uh, it will just, yeah, give me the second one and the seventh in which looks fine. And then if I click over here, uh, here it's uh, missing. It says on the fourth line, but it's actually on the third line, the last chart. But yeah, uh, you get the logic. And then when you click on format and you get, as I said, you don't get any errors, then everything is fine. And when you click text, you're just sending a, like a normal text. Uh, this is a JSON type. You're just sending a normal text like ID equals to ID, for example, or whatever you want to, how, however you want to send, send it. And then the X uh, WW form uh, arrow encode is actually sending the data as a uh, form type. So if you if you ever submitted a form from uh, URL, this is the one that, uh, this is how it is actually sent uh, the request from. So if you have a form in your website and you don't want to send it uh, using a Flutter flow to your website, this is actually how you can do it. You can just uh, uh, fill all the parameters from your form and the important part is just to get the names right and then you can send it to your uh, website or your form. Uh, the most common one is JSON. So the ones common get and post, and if you're using post, it will, for most of the time you, you use a JSON format. Uh, and this one is not required. You don't need to uh, put a, var a variable um, in the URL, but uh, it's good to know that you are actually uh, capable of doing this. And this is actually uh, how you can, let me get that to, get again, and I broke uh, further flow as you can see, of course, as I'm messing it around with it. Uh, this one probably, I'm not sure, this one can be, get return, delete, I don't know why it broke, but uh, yeah, I was just uh, wanting to say that uh, we can begin actually, uh, no, we cannot begin, but we can, sorry, we can continue next week and just uh, get through the response and test. And as I said, if you have any questions, let me know. And the best way to, to do your questions, to write your question is to record a video with your problem. And then when I go live, I can just play this video and just uh, show you what is the uh, fix. When you record your videos, please let me know what is your exact problem? Show me, show me the problem. Show me what you actually try to do and show me what you actually want to be able to do in response. So this, these three things will be very easy for me to actually uh, see what is the problem and then help you with your problem. So thank you very much for today. Uh, next week, I hope uh, we'll have time. And then uh, next Monday, I will show you, I will get into deep linking and dynamic links if we don't have any questions. And then I can show you uh, the difference with it and how you can actually use it. So thank you very much for joining and I hope